Okay, so March 3rd, Marzo 3, 2022. See? Are we going to be able to use this piece of paper on the test? Yeah. Yeah. So, my, you know, my teaching career has progressed. And one of the things I've learned is this. You would never expect an engineer to build a bridge without their notes. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So I would hope that you would use your notes to take this test, right? It's on you were grading us on the fact that we know how to do this, not that we remember of what it is. Exactly, Michael. And isn't that more worthwhile? Yeah. Okay, number one. So it's an x squared. So let's do the parent function first. The parent function is y equals x squared. So I need both. And in fact, I, I tried to highlight and underline both. I need both. So let's go ahead and grab the parent function first. And let me get my pens ready. So number one. Go ahead. Uh-oh, I'm sorry. The parent function. Um, and I got a whole bunch of Oh, I'll just it okay. So my parent function is a regular x squared. And here's my... Up one over one, right? Up no. one over one and up two, up four. Over two, up four. Oh, yes, yes. And then it's over three, up nine, right? So there's my parent function. So it's over 1, up 1, because 1 squared. It's over 2, up 4, because 2 squared. Um, I probably could have graphed this. In a, you know what? What the heck? I got time. I'll just do it again, right? So we see all of it. What the heck? Let's do it better, huh? Let's do it better. There we go. All right, so 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We know it's symmetrical with the y-axis. And there's my parent function. Now, no one should miss this problem because there it is, right? There it is. Agreed? Now, what we want, though, is this parent function translated. Because of the negative 4, the vertex is at positive 4, negative 9. Because it's the opposite of the inside. Someone messed up with it. So then... We're going to go to 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? And it's the same graph. We just are going to move our parent function to here. We take our parent function and just move it to here. So I'll still do my 1, 1, my 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and... Okay. How's that? I like it. Okay. I saw one thumb up and I heard an I like it. That's good. And there's another thumbs up. Cool. All right, number two. Wait. I'll wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I will. That's good. You need to tell me to wait when I get going too fast. So the, <coughs> the blue one's the parent function? Yes. Yeah, so the parent function, this, in fact, I'll write it down. That's my parent function, and this is f of x. Is, is it negative 8.75? Say it again? Is it negative 8.75? No, that's what I got here. That's just the same. Oh, that's so rude. There. There's the Okay, tell me when you're ready for number two. 
Okay. Lucy, are you ready? I saw you doing this. Yeah. Okay, so now number two. Yes. Absolutely. Uh huh. So number two, it's an absolute value graph, right? So we're going to move it. We don't actually have to grab it. We just need the equation. So it's absolute value. Tomorrow might be an x squared. Who knows? But it's some function tomorrow. It might not be exactly this one, but it's going to be a function. So we want it to be a reflection over the x-axis. So that's going to make it negative. Vertical stretch of 1 half. Translation of 5 units up. So add 5. And then 1 unit right. So we're actually going to go back. So we're going to go 1 unit right over minus 1 because it's the opposite, right? So my function will be g of x equals negative 1 half. Okay, negative 1 half. 1 half is the vertical stretch. Is the, okay, if it says vertical stretch or vertical stretch, is that always the number in front of the parentheses? Yes. Cassie, you say things so well. Yes, yes, yes. See, a vertical stretch, vertical stretch is always the number in front of the parentheses. Yes. Wait, okay. Uh, okay, so. Can you write that down on the paper? Um, if you want to, so um, I could write the y equals a absolute value of x minus h plus k. And what Cassie said is this number out in front is your vertical stretch. How's that? That number out in front is always your vertical stretch or your vertical shrink, okay? It's the number out in front, okay? So then absolute value x, we have to have the x because it needs the x variable to graph it. And then we're going to make a one unit to the right. Now remember, it's the opposite. Remember my silly little dance? It's not going to be plus one, but it's going to be subtract one. And then we're going to go plus five. What's the difference between those lines and the parentheses? This makes the V. This is, the ap this is absolute value. Great question. This is absolute value. And the absolute value is the V. Without the absolute value, it's just a straight line. Sure. Yeah, Brian? Isn't it in the lines opposite? So wouldn't that be positive one? No. Wait. Oh, you're saying, I see you're saying, it. You're saying, yeah. you're saying it correctly, but we want to go to the right. You said it correctly, but to the right, so we're going to go back one. So wouldn't that be positive one inside then? Because the opposite is negative one. It is the opposite. So the opposite of going to the right one. So, okay, boom, boom. But um, here it is, right? There's the parent function. So when I'm taking the right one, we got to go and subtract one. Now, let me see oh. why. Yeah. One. What's one plus one? What's one? I'm sorry. What's one minus one? What's one minus one? Yeah. That's puts it at its. So that's why it's the opposite. So mm. why is the the stretch part negative? Um, because of this word right here. Yeah, I'm done that yet. Yes, totally correct. Wait, yes, right. Oh, no, I'm not done yet. Red is right. I'm not done with it. Yeah. Is there a way to find the domain and range without dropping? Yes, we're going to do that. Now use our brain power. That was right. I agree with that. Okay. So now let's go back to answering your question. I'm going to go back to what I heard. Okay. I heard the negative, so it's upside down, right? So it is. If it is upside down, and it's the v, right? What's its highest point? Wouldn't that be at the highest point? So it kind of looks like this. You don't have to graph it. I agree. It's going to look something like this. Okay. That's the y-intercept, right? That's the vertex. Oh, the vertex. That's what yeah. you meant to say, right? Yes, I did. So what's the y value of my vertex? Five. And it goes down, right? Because of the negative? Because you asked why does it why is it negative? It goes negative because it's a reflection over the x-axis, right? Oh, so if it didn't say that, it would be y is 
greater than or equal to five? Yes, but this one's going to be less than or equal to, right? Oh, yeah. So domain, you guys know the domain. How wide is it? How wide is this graph? All real. Good. X equals all real numbers. But Cassidy, you said it. What's the range? Y is, great, is less than or equal to 5. Or equal to 5. Perfect. So we didn't really have to graph it. We do a rough sketch. We just know that it's upside down and that positive 5 is at its vertex. Okay? All right. Now, number 3. How am I doing? Am I going slowly enough? Write an equation. So it's a straight line, so let's start here. Y equals mx plus b, right? And I know the slope is going to be, let's see, it's going to go, if I do my slope form, it's going to be 200 minus 600 over 5 minus 1. Slope formula. So I just took my two points, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay? That's to find the slope. Yes. Or you can just see that it went down 400. Do you see that? It went down 400 as it went over 4. And you can see that. It went down 400, rise over run, down 400 as it went over 4. And that just becomes a negative 100, right? That's my slope. What's my y-intercept? I'm not quite sure. It sure looks like it could be 700, right? It probably is 700. Probably is 700. But how can I find out exactly what it is? I can use my y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I'm pretty sure it's 700, but I'm not sure. I mean, yeah, but it could be be 650. That's it could. The, that's to find the y-intercept? Yes. That'll help me find the y-intercept. So if I put in my point, each, which point do you want to use? First or second point? How about the first point? Yeah, I agree. How about the first point? The second point will work, but the first point looks easier, doesn't it? So I'm going to go y minus 600 equals my slope, negative 100 times x minus 1. Oh, yeah, it's it's definitely 700. I can see it now, but I'll solve it for you to prove why it's 700. Can you guys see the 700 coming? Yeah. I'll do it so you can see the 700. y minus 600 equals a negative 100. x plus 100, right? I just distributed. That times that, that times that. I will go plus 600, plus 600, and I'll have a y equals negative 100 x plus 700, okay? There's my equation. Now, words, interpret, interpret. Let me highlight, interpret, interpret the slope. What does slope mean? If you want to make it easy, it's always this word over this word. It's always y. Slope is always y over x, right? So it's sales per year, isn't it? So if you want to get really technical, we put just sales per year. Sales per year is fine. Per year. That'll work. But it's more specifically, I'm losing $100 million a year. That is a bad business. You agree? Terrible. Uh, but can we put sales per business on the Yeah, the absolutely. Yeah. But it really is. We're losing $100 million per year. It's kind of like Peloton right now. I have a Peloton. I love my Peloton. But you know, as soon as the weather's nice, I'm riding outside, right? Huh? Why would I ride inside when it's a beautiful day? And I have friends that ride their Peloton every day. I'm like, okay, well, that's great. The whole reason I have a Peloton is so I can ride in the winter. Anyway, enough of that. Huh? Let's go on to number four. Now, we did number four in our warm-up, didn't we? Same exact one, number four. So number four, y equals a x minus h squared plus k. That is the formula we need, correct? Because we're asking for vertex form. And there's my equation. Vertex form? Yeah, we did this exact same problem, didn't we? And we'll do it again, because it's good practice. 
Well, I do it in two steps. You don't have to. Y equals a x minus a minus 6 squared plus a negative 12. So I put in my vertex h k, correct? h k, correct? Double negative, I'll just change that. Now, we need a point x, y. My negative 24 goes in for y. I'm going to put in my 0 for x. Okay. Then I'm going to go plus 12, plus 12. I'll go negative 12 equals a times 36. You okay? 36. Divide by 36. And I reduce that to negative 1 third, right? Now we need the equation, right? Equations have variables. I need x and y. I'm going to go right back to here. I'm going to put my negative 1 third right there. And I'll rewrite it as a y equals a negative 1 third x plus 6 squared minus 12. There is my answer. I certainly can. I'll wait for you. I certainly can. What do you think? You, I think you're going to be okay. If we take our time, I think you'll be all right. Okay. I'll wait for you to tell me. I think I'm going to need a calculator for the next one, right? We're going to need a calculator for the next one. If you, okay. There's only three. Oh, I think kids have them. Oh, I have one on my desk, too. I have one on my desk. Anybody who, close by, anybody need a calculator? Calculator, anybody, anybody got, anybody need one? I've got one on my desk. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, you ready? Okay, ready? Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at five. So the first thing I need is a matrix. You guys remember this? So we're going to do matrix A. Which is 3, 5, 4, 5, 2, 3, 6, 3, 4, right? And I'm going to need a matrix B, which is a 13, negative 9, negative 8. Okay, and I'll wait for you. Okay, so we need a matrix, right? Number five. So what I'm doing is setting a matrix. I know I have to use a matrix, right? I mean, I don't want to do it the other way, right? I don't want to do it by elimination. That'd be hard, right? Rather, you were pretty good at doing elimination, but let's let the, let's let the calculator do it, right? Three. So I'm going to go to matrix. I'm going to edit. Remember how to do this? Edit A. I'm editing A. It's a 3 by 3. I'm going to just type over the numbers that are in there. So I'm going to just retype. I'm going to go 3, 5, 4, 5, 2, 3, 6, 3, 4. Okay? And then I'm going to make matrix B. Edit, so I go to matrix again. I go to edit, because I go to edit so I can create, make, change, edit. I want B, so I highlight B. B is a three by one, three, enter, one, enter, and I'm gonna put in my 13, negative nine, negative eight, okay. Yeah. 
Okay. So the equation we need, we need this a inverse times b. Okay. We need that. So then I go and I quit. Go back to matrix names a inverse times I go back to matrix B right and there's my answer but I'll wait for you okay now if you did not get that answer you're lost okay Yes. Okay, so here's my answer. Ready? You're right. My answer has to be some y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now we know a, b, and c. a is negative 3, b is 6, and c is negative 2. So my equation is going to be a y equals a negative 3x squared plus 6x minus 2. Yeah. Okay, now, question, yeah. Vertex is at negative 3, negative 2. It's half as tall. Wait, are we done with 5? Um, yeah, 5's done. Oh, I never wrote the, yeah, I wrote the answer. Here's the answer to 5. All right, so number six. You guys ready for six? I'll wait for, I'll wait for six. Uh, we're probably going to run out of time. I guess the best we can do is... Yeah. Yeah, do that. We'll do that. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll do it at the beginning of class, and then we'll take the test. We'll go boom right into it. I drop on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do, we'll do the back tomorrow. So number six, if I graph this vertex at negative three, negative two, right? I just made it half as tall. I just made it half as tall. This is not critical. This piece is not critical for this graph. But the line of symmetry is right here. Here's my line of symmetry. Line of symmetry. How about x equals negative 3? So it's where it crosses the x? Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. I can also just plug this in the calculator, right? And it'll give me the answer. Sure. It increases. It increases. 
from x is greater than negative 3, okay? So it's going uphill. You guys hanging out outside From right here, right? It's going uphill from here. And it's going downhill from hill, here. So it decreases. It decreases over here. From x is less than negative 3, okay? So the bell is probably going to ring. We'll finish this up and you guys can take it. It won't be hard to finish it up tomorrow.